So our second featured talk for tonight is from Mike Rissy and Jeff Ware. Uh, Jeff uses good code and good coffee to build a great user experience. He graduated from the master's with from the master's in computer science program at Stanford. I've heard of it, with a focus in HCI, and works as a full stack engineer at Mixmax, where he's building Slack for external communication. Mike is a freelance media developer currently building a restaurant inventory management system. He's worked on many media projects over the years, including MadEye, Velocity, and MeteorPad. Also, coincidentally, Mike and I went to college in the same small town in Minnesota. Um, so tonight, Jeff and Mike will be presenting about building MixMax for OSX using Meteor and Electron. So everybody, please welcome Mike and Jeff. Hi, everyone. I'm Jeff Ware. I'm an engineer at MixMax. And my name is Mike Chrissy. Uh, today we're going to talk about a project that we've been working on together called Meteor Electron. But first, what is Meteor? I assume you all know. But uh, Meteor gives you a radically simpler way to build real-time mobile and web apps, entirely in JavaScript from one code base. Uh, is it just me, or is there some kind of app that's missing there? Electron lets you build cross-platform desktop apps with web technologies. Oh, that's right. It was desktop apps. Um, so quick overview of uh, what we're going to be covering today. First, we're going to take the to-do's demo and uh, show you what it, that looks like in Electron. Then I'm going to hand it over to Jeff, who's going to talk about how they took uh, Meteor Electron and used it uh, to do a real production thing, and in the process, uh, made it a package that can handle a lot of the demands of production, essentially taking it from a, a toy project to something that is ready for use. So without further ado, let's uh, see a demo. So this probably uh, looks familiar to you. This is uh, your normal to-dos app in Meteor. And there's nothing fancy going on here. Uh, this is just a completely normal to-dos app. And I'm going to type one command here, Meteor add Mason Electron. OK, so I added the package. The app server is restarting. Now it's building the Electron app, and what? Uh, there it is. So now we have a desktop app running Meteor. <laughs> so one of the super important goals for us on this project was making it super easy to, uh, to do this, and I hope we succeeded. Uh, but we wanted to do more than that. We wanted to be sure that it was also uh, easy to do something more advanced than just a simple wrapper. And provided you're not doing anything too fancy, you should be able to do this mostly with a declarative configuration. So now I'm going to uh, copy this into my settings JSON file. Press save. And the app is going to be rebuilt. And there it is. Uh, I don't think you want to make a window that size, but you, you can if you want. <laughs> uh, and there's lots of other options that you can configure there. You can change the name, the icon. Uh, if you're interested in what you can change in this way, uh, check out the GitHub uh, page. All right, so getting back to the presentation now. I wanted to give a few of the reasons for why we built this package. Uh, and one of them is that we think Electron support should be easy. Honestly, it's not that hard uh, right now. You can do it yourself if you have a day or two. Uh, but we like to think that we made it easier. Uh, we also want to provide a collection of best practices from dev to production. So I hope you see that it's like a pretty nice environment for developing. Changes to the native Electron app, as well as the Meteor app, will hot reload for you while you're developing. Um, and one of the other requirements of the project for us was that it be a thin client approach. So there's a few other Electron packages out there. But they've all taken uh, a thick client approach, I guess, uh, in that they've bundled the Meteor server into the application. And that's great if you need offline support. Um, but we didn't, and we wanted people to be able to collaborate, uh, which requires a central server. So when I say thin client, this is what I mean. The Electron app, as well as the web browser, are all talking to one Meteor web server. 
Uh, at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Jeff, and he's going to talk about how this can be used for something a little bit more demanding than a to do's app. Jeff, yes, Mike. Uh, so, as Nick said during the introduction, uh, I work for Mixmax, which is building a rich communications platform that is like Slack for external communication. So we bring the same visibility to your email that Slack does to your chats, as seen here in our live feed. So this is a feed of all the interactions that people are having with your email, if they're opening it, if they're clicking links in it, if they're downloading files. And this, uh, this feed is so powerful that our users wanted to keep it open all the time, which is why we wanted to make a desktop app. And as, uh, <coughs> as Mike showed earlier, it was what attracted us to Meteor Electron was that it's so easy to convert this web app into a desktop app. All we had to do to get it running in this wrapper was just simply add the package to our application. From that point, it was really easy to make it start looking more like a desktop app by changing that settings file that Mike showed. So to get it loading the right URL to start, we just had to set the root URL and the launch path to be appended to that. To change the app icon, just had to provide a path to the file, and to hide the title bar, again, just another settings change. And we made it possible for changes to the settings file to reactively reload and relaunch the application. So even though Electron is adding another layer to your app, you have the web app as normal, but then it's loading in a native shell you still get the same convenience you're used to with Meteor. So that's really the first feature of Meteor Electron is that it allows you to easily iterate on a native app, just as you would with a web app. Some of the changes that we wanted to make when going from the web to the desktop couldn't just be declared in settings or accomplished merely through responsive CSS. Some changes required using Electron's native APIs. Now here's one example of how you might do that in Electron. Let's say that you want to open a URL in the browser. <laughs> and if you simply call window.open in Electron, it'll open an Electron window. You have to call this node API to open that URL in the browser. And by default in Electron, you can actually use all of Node's APIs, all of Electron's APIs from the browser. Um, so you can require this module and, and call the method that it opens in the browser. But if you just use Electron APIs willy-nilly, you can end up exposing things that you might not want to, like the ability to delete the contents of your hard drive. Electron expects that your HTML and CSS and JavaScript are running locally, so it treats them as a trusted extension of the native code. This is not at all a good assumption when running a hybrid web app, as we are in using this thin client Meteor Electron approach. So what we need is some sort of native bridge where it's possible for the web to access Electron APIs, native APIs, in a trusted fashion. So what we do is we make this Electron module. And it's possible for that to define select APIs that under the hood use Electron's native APIs, but you can no longer just require whatever you want and use those insecure APIs. The details of how we do this are out of scope for this presentation, but if you're curious, I encourage you to uh, visit our blog, as given in the URL there, uh, and you can find the technical details there. And I should say that this presentation will be posted to the meetup group after uh, the talk, so don't worry about remembering these things right now. Now you might ask, what's bridged? And currently, the only APIs we bridge are that URL opening API, uh, an accessor to check if the app is running in full screen or not, and an accessor to see when it transitions between full screen or not window events. And this is not a lot. Uh, we're not bridging APIs to create menu bar items, to show desktop notifications, all the good stuff that Electron provides intentionally. The native bridge is meant to support web apps so that you can very quickly make your web app look and behave like a native app with minimal code and in a safe fashion. If you want to go beyond that to make a super rich Electron app, for instance, the Mixmax application shows an icon on the menu bar, it's totally possible to swap Electron's default, swap Meteor Electron's default application code out for your own. You just give it the URL, sorry, give it the path to the directory where that code is. 
and it can still integrate with the rest of Meteor Electron. If you put that code in the private directory, you can still get reloading as Meteor would do. Uh, and um, uh, this is a totally anticipated use case, and there's more directions about how to get that set up on our blog. Sorry, on the readme. So now you've seen how Meteor Electron reactively rebuilds your application, and it gives you this runtime support, this native bridge. It also supports uh, serving your application's downloads and update feed. That's right, as a Meteor package, it can totally just add middleware to your server without you having to write any of that code yourself. So one of the things it does is uh, allow, it to tell, allow you to tell it where, to, where users can download your app. So if you put the URL to uh, a zip file in your settings, the package will just start serving that from your application's root URL plus uh, slash app slash download, um, and then the platform is Darwin or Win32. It's not rocket science, this redirection, but it's necessary. So this is one of the things that Meteor Electron does is Meteor Electron takes care of the unglamorous tasks for you, so you can get very quickly from started with Electron to shipping a production app. You might ask, what are we downloading? Uh, and the question you need to ask yourself is, do you want automatic updates or not? This might seem like a gimme, of course you'd want automatic updates, but there might be situations where you're fine shipping individual builds. If you're at a hackathon, for instance, or if you're shipping internal builds for beta testers, um, and we mention this because it's much easier to do this than to set up automatic updates. If you want to sh just ship individual builds, you just need to enable auto-packaging in your settings, and if you want to set up a Windows build, you just have to tell Meteor Electron, in, again, in your settings, that you want to build for Windows as well. And it'll create these builds, uh, and you can just take them from the directory on disk where it creates them, put them uh, uh, at the URL that we showed previously, um, and you'll be good to go. If you want automatic updates, uh, there's a bit more work that you have to do. For Mac, you have to sign up for Apple's developer program. You'll get a certificate to be used to code sign your app. Uh, you tell Electron the, the name of that certificate, and it'll sign it. And again, you have the build. You can upload it to the server. If you want a Windows app, uh, it's a lot more complicated to code sign that application to bypass Windows virus scanners. Uh, just letting you know this up front. Uh, so our sort of approach that we've taken with Meteor Electron is that we will provide you as much support as possible to build your desktop app. Everything that can be automated, packaging your application, reactively rebuilding it, serving the download and update feeds, Meteor Electron automates that for you. Things that require configuration, like your application size, the icon, or whatever, Meteor Electron supports configuring those things. And things that require you to set up, like this code signing, it's a one-time setup, Meteor Electron documents in full. And we won't force you to take that step until necessary, until you're ready for it. So that's sort of the approach that we've taken, is give you as much support as is possible and, and show you what you need to do when you need to do it. An example of how Meteor Electron can up gracefully upgrade from, from the hobbyist use case to the professional use case is, is these download URLs. So if you just you know, want to make it easy for yourself serving, you can put those builds in your Meteor app's public folder, and they'll just be served from your root. And you can get a permalink to that just by uh, you know, having a single link to that build. But if you want a more, uh, a more efficient setup, a bit more complicated, but bit more performance setup, you could use something like CloudFront and have version URLs, uh, set up caching for that. And if you just put a placeholder in the URL, as you can see there, Meteor Electron will substitute in the current version when you deploy your server. Um, so that's just an example of how we anticipate your needs growing as, as you get further along with your Electron development. Now I'd like to, uh, to hand it back to Mike so Mike can talk some more about the approach we've taken with Meteor Electron. Yeah, so just to kind of summarize some, some of what Jeff was getting at, um, he showed a lot of options, uh, but we want to just like stress that it's easy to just like build an app and give it to other people. If that's all you want to do, like you should just be able to add the package and send people a zip file. Uh, and you should even be able to go to the next stage pretty easily. And it's not until you need to like do these things like code signing and automatic updates 
that it's going to be a little bit more involved. Um, and even for that, we hope that uh, it's easier than it would be without a Meteor Electron. Cool. And we wanted to close by saying, uh, uh, by explaining why, why use Meteor Electron uh, to develop an Electron app in general, and why use Meteor uh, to develop an Electron app in general. And that's because, as we showed you tonight, developing an Electron app requires implementing changes across three different areas, across your build process to reactively rebuild and package that app, uh, at runtime to provide uh, a native bridge uh, to the client, and on your server to serve the download and update feeds. And it seems like a lot of work that all needs to be coordinated by some sort of settings file, but Meteor Electron as a Meteor package, full stack package, can hook into all of those areas and make the experience as seamless as it can be for you. So if you've enjoyed uh, hearing us talk about Meteor Electron and if, if solving problems like this intrigues you, uh, I encourage you to come talk to me or uh, Brad or my colleague Spencer. Uh, Spencer, raise your hand and say hi. Uh, later tonight. Um, and uh, now I'd like to open the floor to questions. Um, some possible questions about technical details I skipped over are given on the slides. Um, and the URL to the uh, repo is shown at the bottom there. Um, so you can, of course, find this and find out how you can get started yourself. What are you wearing around your neck? <laughs> <laughs> so this is sort of uh, uh, Could you repeat the question, Jeff? Oh, yeah. The question, uh, yes, the, the gimme, why, what am I wearing around my neck? So th this answer is actually two of the questions here. Uh, the what does it take to w make Windows remote updates work? And also <laughs> what I'm wearing. Um, and that is actually a, a physical USB token. Uh, if you want to get code signing working for, uh, for a new Windows app, you're not an existing Windows developer, the only way to shut down Windows virus scanners for good is to uh, uh, verify your organization's identity, and then you get shipped an actual code signing USB token. <laughs> so you have to plug this into your computer when you want to build the Windows app. Um, and. Uh, <laughs> you know, not as convenient as you might hope. But again, we don't, we don't force you to take this step up front. We mm -hmm. give you a graceful path to doing so. And, <laughs> and we document how, how to get this going when, when you need to. Other questions? Do Electron apps have an offline mode, or do they always seem to be online? So the question was, do Electron apps have an offline mode? Um, yeah, Electron apps generally work offline. Um, and we don't really support the offline use case too well. Uh, they need to point to a server for it with uh, Meteor Electron. Uh, there are people that are pursuing like a, an approach where Meteor actually runs locally as part of the Electron app. Uh, Electro Meteor, I know, is one of them. Um, and they're pretty interesting approaches. But generally, with most Meteor apps, I think, uh, they're multi-user and the data is like synchronized. So it doesn't make as much sense to have an offline mode as it would for most Electron apps. Let's go there. Is there support for uh, developer tools like remote uh, Chrome developer tools or something? Uh, it's totally possible to uh, open the Chrome developer tools in the application. Uh, do you want to show that quick? Okay. You still have to do yeah. that. Could you repeat the question? The question was, is it possible to use the Chrome developer tools that you're used to with the application? And totally. Um, that's one of the things we configure, actually, is uh, it's just uh, Command-Alt-I. Yep. So here's uh, Chrome Developer Tools, just as you see in the browser, access to the same goodness in Electron. Electron tracks uh, the latest Chrome, um, and they're pretty good about updating. So whatever cutting edge features you're used to in the browser, um, uh, you can take advantage of in Electron. Do you plan to have iOS and Android wrappers as well? Uh, the question is, uh, can Meteor Electron be used for iOS and Android wrappers as well? Or do we anticipate that? Um, Electron is a desktop-only technology uh, because it uses desktop Chrome. Um, for iOS and Android, uh, um, we're pretty interested in looking into Meteor's support for Cordova, and um, Martin is going to speak about that after us. Can you build taskbar applications, or how hard is that to do? The so question is that... The apps that stand there at near the clock. Yeah. Um, the question is, uh, can you use can use Electron to build taskbar applications, and uh, you can totally do that. Um, in fact, uh, I think we dare risk 
changing the adapter, or do you have mix maxims? Hmm? Do you have mix maxims installed? Or? No. Okay. Let's change it. Let's see if we can uh, <laughs> tempt the demo gods by showing uh, what mix max looks like. Uh, so Mixmax's Electron app, as you can see, adds an icon to the taskbar. Uh, and you can click on that and access, uh, access your application's features just as you might hope. That's one of those things that Meteor Electron doesn't support out of the box, uh, and that you would switch to using a custom app directory for, as documented in our readme. We have time for one more question. One more question. OK. Can you hook into desktop notifications as well? Uh, absolutely. Um, Electron, that's one of Electron's APIs. Uh, one of those things that is not supported by Meteor Electron out of the box, but uh, you could totally take advantage of if you used a custom app directory. Can you hook into desktop notifications? That was the question. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> thanks. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys.